U.S. coastal regions draw millions to their shores. Coastal cities and beaches provide jobs and opportunities that appeal to tourists and residents alike. But as these regions grow, more people and property are at risk from hazardous coastal storms. The challenge right now is that everything's going up. The hazard appears to be going up, storms appearing to be getting larger. More people are moving to the coast. Not only more people moving to the coast, but they're moving to the southeast counties and the Gulf counties where the hazard is the greatest. The United States has eight cities among the top 20 global cities at greatest economic risk from coastal flooding. All of them are along the east and Gulf coasts. In the past decade, population growth in regions where hurricanes hit most frequently has been twice the national average. As a result, coastal storms have become more expensive. Coastal storms today cause approximately half of all natural disaster losses, but their impact is expected to become far worse. A warming climate will raise sea levels, resulting in higher storm surge and may intensify hurricanes. Sea level rise is significant because it's, it's really the combination of sea level rise and storms that, that create the problem. The coastal plain along the eastern Gulf Coast is very flat, and a few inches of, of elevated uh, sea level means that the areas of inundation could be dramatically greater. Although both the risks and the costs of catastrophic storm losses are rising, the nation's strategy for managing coastal risks remains reactive rather than proactive. We pay for coastal storms after they occur, once they become a disaster. We've known for a long time that New Orleans is vulnerable to flooding, and it occurred during Katrina. We've known for a long time that New York City was vulnerable to flooding, and it occurred during Sandy. The country should really be investing ahead of time and not just waiting for storms to happen and then cleaning up much more expensively afterwards. To reduce risk from coastal storms, the federal government and some local communities have built levees, seawalls, and other storm barriers, and have built up beaches and dunes. Other strategies are designed to reduce the consequences of storms, such as elevating buildings and moving development away from high-risk areas. But such strategies have not been widely funded, despite evidence that they are cost-effective. There's a lot of incentives to develop coastal areas. There are much fewer incentives to not develop risky coastal areas. You really need to strengthen the incentives that the federal government provide to the local level. A national perspective is needed to achieve the most benefits from federal investments. A national risk assessment could identify where dangers to human lives, economic losses, and social impacts are greatest and in need of targeted strategies. Working from this perspective, the nation can reduce risks and costs, increase environmental and social benefits, and build resilience in coastal communities.